Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well. It's a lovely sunny day here in London and we are in week three, I think, of lockdown. Anyhow, hope you're all um, doing, doing well and staying arty. I wanted to say thank you very much to everyone who's been sending me pictures of the artwork that you've been doing from home. It makes me really, really happy to see that you're all engaging and getting your creative, flussy, bleh, creative juices flowing while, while you're at home. Anyhow, today um, I planned two lessons. One is going to be to finish the painting and this one is going to be on mark making for drawing. So <clears throat> a lot of people, when they begin to draw, they wonder about mark making and different sorts of mark making. So today I'm going to be showing you mark making using two basic drawing materials. One is going to be graphite pencil and the second one is going to be charcoal. Okay, so let's get cracking. So <clears throat> for drawing in pencil, I've got two tools. I've got a 4B pencil. And then I've got this beautiful pencil over here. And then I've got a rubber. And I'm going to be perhaps using a paintbrush as well. Yeah. So pencil is very, very versatile material. Everybody's got it at home. You might be wondering <clears throat> what the number means. And basically, um, pencils come in H and in B numbers. The H numbers are hard pencils i don't really you can draw with them but i really like drawing with b pencils and my basic pencil and most versatile is the 4b pencil it's a soft lead pencil and the first thing i always ask my students to do is to explore the range of the pencil so by applying loads of pressure you can see how dark the pencil can go and by slowly slowly lifting off the pressure you can explore the range of tone that your pencil has got. I think it's really important to do this because you need to see um, how dark and how light can you go with your equipment. Okay, so I would say that's a pretty good range more or less of a 4B pencil. This one over here is a, it works like that. It's got the lead and I think this one is a 6B, I'm not really sure, but it's darker, yeah, can you see a difference? So the higher the number, the softer it will be. So the higher numbers are better for shading and the lower numbers are better for line drawing, okay? So that's a range. Yeah, first thing you should do when you start drawing. So the basic mark making for drawing is called hatch. And we've got single hatch. So for the single hatch, the important thing is that I am not moving the pencil like this because my lines are not going to be that straight, but that I actually move my whole hand. So it's my whole wrist. My wrist is firm and it's just my whole forearm. It's moving to make the line. And if I want to make it darker, what I do is that I add more lines to it. And I can continue to add as many lines as I need to. Okay, so that's a single hatch. I will demonstrate afterwards in doing a sphere on each mark so that you can see the difference. The second one is called a cross hatch. No, oh, let me move my cup of tea. So the cross hatch, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm going in one direction. And then I'm going to cross the hatch in the opposite direction. I can actually shift the whole paper. And I can add on more marks if I want to make an area darker. 
some people are very very tidy and they can do this in a really beautiful way that almost looks as if it's done by printing i'm not too tidy okay and the last one is called oh, let me <laughs> contour hatch okay and contour it's a word that basically means that the line that I'm making is representing the shape of the object that I'm drawing, okay? So I think contour hatch is better demonstrated by doing a shape. So let's say I am doing a circle. Well, it's a bit wobbly. I would then follow the shape to describe it. Okay, I'm not doing a very good job with this one. more or less I hope you get the idea I would say <clears throat> that it's important to first of all make perfect the single hatch <clears throat> before you move on to the cross hatch and before you move at last to the contour hatch it's really really important that you just practice it as, as best as you can so I'm just going to show you in a sharpie how they work so in a sharpie That's a single hatch, parallel lines, they don't touch each other and you're aiming for them to be at a similar distance from one another, yeah? The cross hatch is the same principle and then you're crossing them over. This one, the single, if you want to make it darker, you're adding in between. And same with a cross, you're just adding in between. And let's see if I can get my contour better now with a sharpie. So with a contour, you end up with a more three dimensional effect. I messed up that, so I'm just going to make it darker. <laughs> adding more lines okay so that's your three different hatches single hatch cross hatch and contour hatch okay so <clears throat> I'm just gonna quickly demonstrate to you using the idea of a sphere so I'm going to first of all select my dock and then I'm gonna select my mid and my light yeah so I'm more or less mapping it out. And I'm gonna make those lines quite soft. At home, you can try doing this, but also what would be great is for you to draw anything that you either have at home, and what you can also do is draw from your imagination, as you normally do, but just using this technique. And what I'll do now is that I'll get my rubber out. Where are my lovely rubbers? Here we go. And I can just erase my guidelines. And then if I want to make it a little bit darker, I can just add on a few more. So I will be with a single hatch. And then we're going to do the same with a cross hatch. I can actually do a ground, that means establishing a base stone everywhere, and then build it up from there. So setting a ground <clears throat> is a term used in art 
for establishing a mid-tone all over before you get started drawing. You can do it with paint or you can do it with pencils, with whatever art materials that you're using. And I can just carry on adding to make it more three-dimensional. Okay, so those are <clears throat> the marks with pencil in terms of um, hatching. Now, you might want to do very, very gestural drawing. And um, that's absolutely fine as well. There's loads of different marks that you can actually use. So I'm just going to show you different kinds of marks that you can do. So let's say <clears throat> you can be very expressive and quite erratic and do something like that. You can also put it on this side, your pencil, and shade like this. You can get your rubbers out and hatch with a rubber or make marks with a rubber um, and draw with it as well. Yeah. So it's many, many different things that you can do. You can also get, uh, where is it? I've got a paintbrush somewhere. Oh, here it is. I can also get a paintbrush and I can try and get rid of the marks. Now you have to consider that whatever mark you're getting is going to um, be very determined by the kind of paper that you're using. So if the paper is very, very grainy, your drawing will come out very grainy. And if your paper is very smooth, then you'll be able to make smoother lines. Yeah. So we're now going to go on to charcoal and see mark making with charcoal so with charcoal i can also work in terms of hatching so that will be a single that would be my cross And that would be my contour. Now, what's important to understand is that with pencil, you can be very, very precise. And with charcoal, you are kind of less precise to begin with. You can achieve a high level of precision and realism with charcoal, but it kind of works in a very different way. And for beginners, I always advise to them that they draw in charcoal. First of all, because if I make a mistake that I don't like, I can do that and incorporate that mark of the mistake as part of my drawing and make my drawing a little bit more interesting. If I make a mistake with pencil and I rub it out, no matter how well I try to rub it out, my mark kind of stays and it doesn't necessarily make my drawing more interesting. So charcoal is a lot more forgiving. The other thing is that if I'm doing, let's say, a circle like that, you saw how long it took me to do it. If I want to do it with charcoal, charcoal is a lot, of a, it's a lot faster. I can get a lot more coverage, a lot faster. And <clears throat> it offers quite a lot more versatility. I really like charcoal. It's also the painter's tool of choice. It's by using a rubber as well, guys. Um, because it allows you to establish different tones very, very quickly. So a detailed drawing in pencil might take many, many hours, while in charcoal it can just take um, much less time. So it's, for me, it's a lot better. So this is hatching in terms of charcoal. I don't normally use hatching a lot when I'm doing charcoal work. I just want to show you different drawing techniques using charcoal. So I think the mistake is that most people rub the charcoal as if it would be a piece of pencil and it's not. It's something very, very different. And it's the first, it's one of the first 
drawing tools that humans used to draw, actually. We can trace it back to so, so many years ago. So the thing that I like to do with charcoal is to tilt it on its side and normally break off a little bit. And you can cover an area really, really quickly. So again, if we're doing the test of the intensity of charcoal of tone and the graduation of tone, sorry. I can go very, very light and I can go very dark. So I can tilt it on each side and I can kind of model quite a lot. If I want it super smooth, I can get a blending stick and then I can achieve quite a lot of realism. I can also use a brush I can use a putty rubber which is a rubber specially made for charcoal before you use a putty rubber it's very important that you warm it in your hands to mold it and putty rubbers are super versatile I can get a very small point by molding it it looks like plasticine so I can get in some detail rubbing and I can also if I put it kind of flat I can use it as a blender and I can also do some interesting mark making with it <clears throat> The important thing to understand about charcoal is that it really works in layers. So the more you put on and the more you take away, the better the results will be. So at the moment, I'm not drawing anything in particular. I'm just exploring and experimenting <clears throat> with the marks that are kind of happening on their own. And I think it's really, really important for people at home to take your time to sometimes not try to draw anything in specific but just see what the material can do and what you can do with it and how to explore it by using different things and it's part of a lot of the fun and by the time you arrive to making a drawing then you would have seen a range of things that your drawing material can do And rather than experimenting on the drawing that you want to do, you've experimented on a piece of paper. We call this, a lot of the times, studies. So making studies. So let's say I am thinking about um, doing the sea, yeah, or water. So if I'm drawing water, I will draw my horizon line first and I would make a kind of like set like line and I will make it really really tiny when it's next to the horizon and quite light in tone because as we were discussing in the other lesson when things are far away they appear lighter at a distance so it's even that is quite it's quite strong and then as I get to the mid ground I can make my mark quite a lot stronger and bigger and as I'm getting to the foreground I can make the mark even deeper in tone darker and bigger in size and shape and just by doing that I'm getting the appearance of depth and distance I can now get <clears throat> blending stick to make the mark appear a little bit more different because nothing is always the same and then I can get a rubber out and get some highlights 
and also the rubber will act as my blender. And then to end with, I can add on a little bit of detail. And that's kind of like basic water. Yeah. Let's say I'm making grass. Again, I would have my horizon line. And I would make my Marco Ili teeny weeny. And as I'm getting to my foreground, I would make the mark bigger. And make it bigger as I get to the bottom of it. And notice that if I'm doing grass, I'm making the mark in every direction, not just up. Like a lot of people doing that when they're doing grass. But grass moves in every way. Now, I'm not going to leave it just as that. So see there, I've got depth already. I'm going to get my rubber, this one that I really like, that is like a dash. And I'm going to continue working with the rubber. Now, this demonstration is all very quick. If I would be doing water or if I would be doing grass, I would be spending a lot more time. So I hope that when you do it, you do that as well. Yeah? And then you can get a little bit more to finish it off. And perhaps you could even blend those top ones so that they're lighter in tone and you get more and more of the idea of depth. Yeah? Now, <clears throat> You might want to, let's say you're making a sky. <clears throat> I would again work in, so let's say that's going to be my sky. And I'm tilting my charcoal sideways. And I'm gonna make it a little bit darker at the top. And a little bit lighter as I'm getting to the bottom. I'm going to be blending this using a brush. And I'm brushing in every direction, trying to get it as smooth as I can. Okay, and now I want to get some clouds in. I'm gonna grab my putty rubber. I'm going to warm it up. And I'm gonna start doing round little motions. So at the moment they're quite vague. But then I can grab another rubber and stri start getting some detail onto them. And I can also get more depth into the cloud by adding darker tones. Work with a blending stick. And more highlights. So as you can tell, it's really a game of adding on, taking off, and being patient and enjoying 
working and finding your way of doing things. There's actually no really right or wrong way for drawing. It's more about your own exploration into how you do it. Yeah? You can also work in a really, really gestural way with charcoal. Make really strong marks. And I really, really love getting rubbers out. And getting different kinds of effects. Okay. Now, an important thing is if you are actually if you're actually drawing from life, it's very important that you follow a basic rule. And that's to do your line drawing first, and then you're going to be selecting the shapes of the darkest darks and you're going to be working from dark to light. So I normally tell my students, line, darkest darks, darks, dark mids, mids, mid lights, lights, highlights, and then reinforce your darks. And that is because as you're working from dark to light, you're blending, and every single time you blend, you're making a darker, lighter. If you lose your darks completely, you will also lose realism and you will lose depth. So it's really, really crucial that you always reinforce your darks at the end of your drawing, at the same time or just after applying your highlights. Okay, so quick recap, line drawing, select the shape of your darkest darks and then your darks and then your dark mids and then your mids and then your mid lights and then your lights and then your highlights and then you reinforce your darkest darks. So you're basically aiming to be working in at least five to six tones if you want to be achieving some kind of realism. Okay. My other really really good tip for drawing is just to carry a sketchbook around and wherever you are to loads and loads of drawing and try to look at what you're drawing and try to spend more time looking at what you're drawing than looking at your drawing on itself. I remember doodling so much when I was a child and when I was a teenager and then when I grew up, wherever I could, I would always doodle and still, whenever I can, I always doodle. And doodling is a really, really good way of finding your own voice in drawing in terms of your line, yeah? Don't worry too much about style because the style is going to be coming from within you. You just need practice to refine it. And the best thing to do is just anything that you've got around you, just try and draw it. It might be a chair, it could be a bowl of fruit, it could be a bottle, it could be a person, a dog, anything you want. But just give it a go and don't give up. Try doing it loads and the more and more time you spend drawing, the better you will become at it. Because drawing, it's a skill. It's not something that you're born being really good at. The people that are really good at it is because they spend lots and lots of time practicing. So get practicing if you want to get good. And with this, I'm going to say goodbye and we will be back exploring other forms of mark making using different kinds of materials like pastels. Yeah, pastels more than anything else. I hope I haven't missed anything. But anyhow, wish you a very lovely day and happy drawing. Bye-bye. Half an hour, baby. Really? Yeah.